Hi, this is Sally Morgan and Tristan Corgi for Conversations with a Corgi. My, I am a physical therapist, a craniosacral therapist, and a Tellington T-Touch practitioner for people and animals. And Tristan Corgi is a Corgi. Today, we're going to continue our discussion about Tellington T-Touches with a look at the belly lift. This is something that has been really invaluable in our work with horses who are colicking for any number of reasons. And we have really been able to literally save horses' lives by using the belly lift for them when their digestive system has an impaction or gas or bloat or any number of things that can go wrong with a horse's digestive tract. In small animals, you may be finding this quite useful as well for similar reasons. Um, for instance, I have used this and taught owners to do this with cats who have a tendency to get hairballs and they get stuck in the digestive tract. And this is one thing you can try um, if your cat is experiencing a hairball and it's stuck in their throat or further down their digestive tract. It's also useful with really big dogs that eat a big meal and then maybe get a little active and then they have some digestive imbalances. And one of the things I love about the belly lift is that it's great for sore backs. So some of your longer breeds like my beloved corgis, dachshunds, basset hounds, and any of the other longer type breeds, um, it's a great technique to use to help with sore backs as it is with humans. It's also good for nervousness, ticklishness, hypersensitivity, and timidity, being timid and fearful, because it helps the animal get a sense of where their body is and it improves their proprioception. It's also a really great technique for arthritis, gait problems, and it's helpful in changing many negative behaviors and habitual responses. It works on the entire body system and particularly the organ system. So in that regard, it is really um, one of your most invaluable touches to use with a dog or a cat or a bunny that might have some digestive problems. And that does not replace, you know, emergency veterinary care if you suspect your animal has been poisoned or has um, a twisted stomach in the case of a large dog or something like that. But it can help you avoid a lot of little um, smaller problems along the way where your dog just isn't feeling well or perhaps has eaten too big of a meal. So the belly lifts um, can be done either with your hands on the belly or by using a folded towel. I have my handy, of course, corgi folded towel here. And because I'll be demonstrating this on small dogs, I have this folded fairly close together. With a bigger dog, you can fold it so it's a little wider because the point is to distribute the pressure around the, the center of the dog and not have too much in any one place. So what you would do with this towel is begin as close behind the front legs as you can. Here's Jack, he's our demo for this. And his name is Jack, not just because he's a Jack Russell, but because of my friend Jack, who is Tristan and Comet's father. And this is a little memorial to all the work that Jack has done to help me over the years. So you're gonna gently lift on the animal's abdomen. You don't wanna pick them up. These are small animals and we're strong, so you can easily overlift when you do this. You just wanna really support the stomach and the organs that are in the stomach. And you wanna hold that from 10 to 15 seconds in a very gentle lift. Make sure you're comfortable when you're doing this and breathing. If you are leaning over a dog or standing in an awkward position, this length of time to hold this is gonna quickly become uncomfortable. And here's the tricky part. When you release this, you want to try to ideally make it twice as long as you've been holding the lift, which would be like 30 seconds. So I sometimes count in my head as I'm doing this, and you're really gonna release the tension on the towel, through your arm, through your fingers, through your whole body, as you exhale a few times, as you're releasing the tension that you have on the towel. So I will do that now.
And that was just about 30 seconds to release the towel. So I'm going to move it back just a couple of inches, about six inches closer to the hindquarter. So on a dog this size, I will only probably get three lifts. And again, I inhale and I lift up gently. You're not lifting up the dog. You're not really even noticing a visible change in the spine. And you're going to hold that for 12 to 15 seconds. And then exhale as you gently release for another uh, 30 seconds or 25 seconds. So the last one, you want to bring it as close to the hindquarters of your dog as you can. And if your dog has ACL trouble with their knees back here, or they have had recent surgery in that area, such as a spay and neuter, or if your dog is just a nervous type of dog, be very cautious about how far back you go because it's a very sensitive area and it can be quite, quite touchy and it can make your dog um, a little bit um, nervous. So if your dog does not like this this far back, just move it a little closer to the front. We'll keep it further back because Jack isn't complaining. And then repeat. So you're going to just lift up for the count of 12 to 15 seconds. And then release for 25 or 30 seconds very, very slowly. And you do that by just gently releasing the muscles in your arm and continuing to breathe until you've released all of the tension in the towel. So you would repeat this a couple of times if your dog is experiencing some problems, maybe three or four times. Um, and then I always like to, again, finish with some Noah's March to integrate that work into the dog's body. Now, I will try to do this on Tristan. He's very short, but he is long, and there's not much room on his pillow for him to stand up. So we'll try it. Tristan, can you get your back legs on your pillow? Oh, he's doing a split. There. <laughs> now, the dog does not have to be standing to do this. He can be sitting or lying down, but you have to be able to get the towel under him. Hi, hon. So we're just going to lift up gently. You probably, like many dogs, will lie down when I start to do this. And then release it slowly. Good breath, Bisky. And then I'm just going to slide it back a little bit. <laughs> and he may have to stand up for me to do that. And then again, lift it gently. And you can see, look at his top line. I'm not putting hardly any pressure I'm really lifting the dog. So if you are a strong person or if you have a little chihuahua, make sure you don't overlift when you do this because then it's not going to be helpful. And then release. And then I'm going to slide it back a little bit more. Hopefully, I'm not getting any of his private areas stuck in the towel. And then we just lift gently. And release. Excuse me, Tristan. 
So one way that I use this in my work doing uh, holistic physical therapy with animals is to have the dog standing on something that might be a bit of a balance challenge. And this would be for a dog that I'm really trying to improve their strength in their abdominal muscles. So I may have them standing on a foam pillow or some cushions or something that's a little bit unstable. And then I'll use the towel under their stomach to do a little belly lift and encourage them to engage their abdominal muscles to help them find balance when they're standing on that unlevel or squishy surface. And this is really useful. And I encourage anyone who has a senior dachshund, a corgi, a basset hound, or any of the other long breeds to do this with them just sort of a few times a week as they're aging to increase their core strength and keep them from injuring their backs. Sometimes when dogs are older, they don't play as much and they don't get as much exercise. And so they are more apt to injure themselves. So it's really important that they keep a strong core as they age, especially with these longer breeds. With a long dog, you do not want to have to subject them to back surgery in their senior years because that's very traumatic. So doing this small little exercise with a belly lift can really um, help them avoid possible surgery. Now, I'll find my other corgi here and just show you how to do this with your hand in case you have a little kitty or a smaller animal. So imagine him standing so I'm not really holding him with my hand. But again, you'll just put the flat part of your hand using as much of the flatness of your hand as you have under the animal and just I usually support them with the other hand on the top and just lift up slightly. Hold it for 15 seconds. And then release it down gently, gently for 30 seconds. And people may wonder, how do you do this on a cat? Aren't they wandering around? Don't they get uncomfortable? And in fact, cats really like this. I have not had any trouble doing this on a cat. But if you have sort of a young kitty and he starts to wander around, just use the towel and follow him and sort of contain him so he's not going too far away. But you can do this while the animal's moving. So don't imagine that he has to hold really still. I've used this a lot with rabbits. Um, rabbits have a myriad of digestive problems, mostly owing to the poor diet that we give them um, because people just don't understand what rabbits need to eat. For instance, they can't digest um, iceberg lettuce. It's mis it has an enzyme in it that they cannot digest. And of course, now most people don't have that in their fridge. And I'll just slide back for one more. Um, so the rabbits are not eating as much iceberg lettuce, but um, in years past, Rabbits often had digestive problems related to having eaten iceberg lettuce. And um, so if you have a rabbit, please really research what are the good foods for your rabbit and supplement their diet as needed. But this is a, even a good thing to do with a bunny. And I might just fold a little washcloth and tuck it under the bunny and do two or three of these belly lifts down the length of the bun. And I've had many a bun go into what I call the flying carpet pose as I'm doing this where they stretch their whole top line out and kick their little back legs behind them because it's very relaxing to have this done. And again, I use a little bit of Noah's March to integrate this, even for my stuffy, when I'm done doing it. So when you're doing the belly lifts, always start near the front legs and work your way to the back legs. If your dog is having a lot of stomach gas and he's very uncomfortable, you may only be able to do a few of these behind the front legs and you may not be able to move further down the back legs. If your dog is seriously sick and you are having someone drive you to the veterinary hospital, you can do belly lifts with a dog laying down and um, in the back of the car and bring him some relief while you're waiting to get to the emergency room. There are some other tea touches that you can do in that situation which we will be reviewing later in the week. But belly lifts are really useful, again, for arthritis, bloating, any kind of digestive problems, fear and timidity. Because it really, as you lift your stomach up and come back down into your body, you begin to feel the relationship between your trunk and your limbs in a way that you weren't before. And that can help with timidity. Fear of loud noises. This is very useful for that. For the same kind of reason, it brings an animal into his body 
in a way he wasn't before. If you think about your um, skeletal position when you're afraid, you're lifting up and you're in alarm and you're in that uh, sympathetic stress response. Um, this work, which is focused on the digestive system and the organ system, can really rebalance that sympathetic, parasympathetic nervous system so that the rest digest is not, um, balanced with the flight-flight uh, flight response so that your animal is more relaxed and able to cope with loud noises. So when we get closer to the 4th of July and we're going to have fireworks and loud noises, or if you're taking your dog to a parade, it's a good idea to do a few of these in the morning before you leave. Or maybe when you're waiting for the parade to start, just bring you know a glove or use your hand or a scarf or something and just quietly do a few of these with your dog. And it will help them feel their whole body and relax during what might be a stressful situation for them. It's great for sensitivity and ticklishness in your dog. And if you have a dog that has ACL problems or subluxing patellas behind, then this is a great thing to do with them as well because it can give them a new sense of their body and help them understand a different relationship between their legs and their body. And maybe they can track a little straighter, which will help keep that patella in place. If your dog might perhaps need surgery on the patellas, this is also a good thing to do to help them strengthen their back before the surgery so that they are not weight-bearing as much on their legs or holding themselves up with their stomachs. And of course, the belly lifts are great to relieve stress and tension because again, it engages the parasympathetic nervous system, which is the rest, digest, peace response, and it allows your animal to regain relaxation. So it's really important when you're doing this to lift slowly and very gently, just, just enough to support the organs, and then to release gradually, gradually, gradually ideally twice as long as you held the lift. Now this is a great thing to do on a human as well. And you can just wrap your arms around their waist from behind them and lift up their belly and hold it and then release it slowly, slowly, slowly. And the person receiving that will really notice a shift in their posture and a shift in their low back as they're doing this. It's also possible to do it on yourself. You just hug yourself in the middle when you're standing is the best because then your pelvis can shift with the changes and you just inhale up and support your belly. And even if you're slim, you can do this and hold it for a few seconds, 10 or 15 seconds, and then release really slowly. And I can already feel my pelvis rolling under me as my vertebrae and my spine are lining up uh, one on top of the other releasing the arch that I have in my back generally. And if you try this a few times on yourself, you'll be able to experience what it feels like for your dog. And even though they are in a quadruped position and we're upright, the benefits are very similar. So it's a great thing also to do this carefully if you have a dog or a cat who has puppies or kittens. It can really help support their spine you don't want to lift too high or too strongly, and you want to use caution late in pregnancy. But if you have a dog that you're, or a cat that you are going to be breeding, it's a great thing to do these belly lifts before you even have bred the animal to help strengthen their back and their abdominal muscles before they have to carry all those little ones inside of them. It can help during labor or contractions um, early in the process as well to do these very carefully while the animal is laying down or sitting or standing. And you can do them gently with your hands even while the animal is delivering if you are a breeder and you have experience with that process. It's really an invaluable thing to know how to do the Tellington T-Touch belly lifts. And I have found it so useful in so many um, circumstances in my animals' lives. I often use it when an animal that I'm working with who's nervous about other dogs is in the labyrinth, and I will do just a little bit with one hand between their front legs just to lift them up a little and help support them and give them a sense of their body and their connection to their legs and to the earth so that they can be more grounded when the experience of having another dog around them may make them a little nervous as we're beginning to work with them. Good job, Tristan. <laughs> 
So, and as I said, with a horse, we do it in a similar way. Often you need two people, one on each side of a really big towel. And again, you start between the front legs, well, behind the front legs and work your way towards the haunches. If you are working with a horse who is actively experiencing colic, be very careful. Sometimes the tension in their stomach is so great that this will really irritate them and they can kick you or bite at you even if the horse is normally quiet. So if you're doing this with a horse, make sure you're an experienced horse person and that you are very cautious about what the horse is doing. Don't fall asleep counting those numbers as you're working with your partner um, and pay attention to where the horse is. Um, it is possible to do this on a horse when it's walking with somebody leading him and a person on each side if that makes the horse more comfortable. You can also, and I have done this myself many times, do it with a very long towel like a beach towel by yourself if you have a smallish horse and you can reach over his top. And I have had lots of horses with mild colic in the spring um, or colic related to the weather or having gotten their spring shots and have been able to relieve a lot of the gas and bloat by doing this work with a towel myself. And I can work with a horse up to about 15.3 myself doing this effectively, but when the horse is taller, I need another person to help me or I need to be standing on something so that I can reach around them. And of course, I need a much longer towel. I have used um, bed sheets, even curtains out of one barn when a horse was colicking and we were on horse blankets. You can use horse blankets, saddle pads if you have the right shape. So, um, and girths, we've even used girths to do this with horses. Or even uh, stirrup leathers wrapped in some kind of fabric you have around the barn, uh, uh, you know, towels, leg wraps, whatever you have. So try to plan ahead and have a towel or two really long ones in the barn if you have horses. And I always have a special place where I keep towels just for my dog so that if I need to use a towel on a wet dog, I have one ready to go. So I hope that you will practice the belly lift when your dog is not in some kind of a medical situation. And really, I encourage you to use it with a senior dog to help build their strength and abdominal muscles to preserve their spinal integrity as long as possible, especially if you have one of these long breeds. I mean, we all love our type of dog. And even if you don't have these long dogs, you know, an active jumpy dog like a big schnauzer or a boxer or a Doberman, this can really help them. They, um, they're either moving or not moving. And sometimes it's really useful when they're not moving and to do belly lifts with them to keep their spine strong so that when they are running around, they have um, the muscular integrity to do many of the uh, acrobatics that we see our dogs do. Um, dogs that do agility, border collies that are catching frisbees, dogs that do fly ball. I mean, if you have an active dog, this is a really great thing to do with them on a regular basis. Again, to protect their spine and encourage them to use their abdominal muscles to support their body and limbs. This is Sally Morgan. This has been Conversations with a Corgi with Tristan Corgi, who has fallen asleep. He's still down here. <laughs> Wave, Tristan. You are so limp in the morning. <laughs> and we have been talking about the Tellington T-Touch belly lift. And tomorrow I have to go to my other job very early in the morning, so we will not have conversations with a corgi on Facebook Live until Thursday when we'll be looking at some more of the specialized tea touches that you can do with your pet for health and wellness and to improve your relationship with your animal. I hope you all have a good day. It's going to be 50 here, even though not so sunny, but we are really looking forward to a nice walk this afternoon with our friend Coco in the sunshine and the heat so that we can get on with the spring coming because we have a lot of snow in the backyard still. Have a great day.